Hey y'all, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we are gonna be going through some of my favorite makeup products from 2023 and the products I'm excited to take with me into 2024. This is gonna be a long video as you can already tell from the timestamps in the video. <laughs> so make sure you have a snack, get comfortable, and let's get into creating this makeup look and seeing the products that I loved throughout the year. To kick off my favorite makeup of 2023 and kind of my favorite look I've created all year, let's start off with priming my skin. And I kind of start off every priming routine the same way. And that's with my first favorite product. This is the Physician's Formula, the Essence of Healthy Toner Plus Setting Spray. And this is a product I purchased on recommendation of Amanda Z. And I really love this. It feels like a pretty simple mist, but there's just something about the way it mists onto the skin and makes my skin feel is what I love the most about it. And just to keep everything simple, I use a little sponge and I just press over. The next step is something that I've really enjoyed. Funny enough, it's not even a product I purchased. It's a product I received as a sample. And the sample has lasted me ages. This is from Bobbi Brown. This is the Vitamin Enriched Eye Base. And this is very similar to the Vitamin Enriched Face Base. I got as a sample back in the spring. Oh, it says this is only good for six months, which means this is about to expire. Oopsie. You use such a tiny little bit and I just apply this after I missed my skin, before I apply the primer, cause this is such a great base for concealer. I feel like even if I did use this as my eye cream, I don't know if I would finish this off in six months because you use such a teeny tiny bit. Like, I don't know if you can tell in here or not. I mean, it is slightly concave. I've made a dent in it, but I've not made it through this pot. You use such a small amount of product. I find if you use too much, it can cause your concealer to break down, but just a tiny little bit pat under the eyes. It is beautiful and I can't see myself buying a full size if I ever get another sample or you can get a sample. I say try this out because it's lovely. The next step in my makeup routine is going to be my face primer and the way I prime my face and the primer I choose kind of depends on what I'm going for during the day. For most days I have been reaching for the Laura Geller Spackle Skin Perfecting Primer. This is the original one. This is kind of like the best of all the different worlds. It gives you a little bit of grip. It adds a little bit of smoothing to the skin. It adds a little bit of hydration to the skin. So if you're kind of like on the fence, you don't know what to choose, you don't have a specific concern, or you're kind of thinking, well, I want a little bit of filling. I want a little bit of smoothing. I would like a little bit of hydration and maybe just a pinch of glow. I would say go with this. It's just a simple, no fuss, easy to use primer. And I like that it has this pump on it. It just dispenses the right amount of product every time. So that's one of the primers I use a lot. When I want to add glow to my skin, my favorite primer is the Guerlain Meteor Base. I did have to repurchase this this year and it makes me sad because it's expensive, but it's so beautiful. It gives the skin the most lovely glow without being shimmery or glittery. I love using this when I'm using a matte foundation and it's more cool or dry outside. So if I want to wear like MAC Studio Fix powder or something like Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer and my skin's not overly oily, I'll use something like this to prime my skin and that makes it look more satiny rather than matte. So I really enjoy this. If I feel like my texture is looking a little crazy or if my pores feel just extra big that day or I just feel like, you know, maybe I should get Botox refreshed and I have like fine lines and wrinkles just popping up everywhere. Then I use a smoothing primer and the primer I've used the most this year for that was also one of my favorites for 2022. NYX the Marshmallow Primer. I feel like since my skincare routine has gotten under control and I really found something that works for me. And if you're curious about my skin routine, I will have the video linked in the cards above as well as the description box below and on the insulate of this video. You can check out the video I posted last week, which was my skin routine for the past year. And then I found as the years progressed, I've used less and less this because I don't feel like I need it as much. But when my skin feels extra textured, this is a good product. My only thing I'm not crazy about with this and something, another reason I don't like to use it too often is it does have a strong marshmallow scent. It does smell very much like marshmallow fluff. And sometimes I don't mind it. Sometimes I don't like it. When I want to smell marshmallow, I'll reach for a perfect perfume with like a marshmallow scent. I like this, but I don't use it all the time. And we'll I'd be very curious to see how much I use something like this going to the next year because I do like it. I do recommend it. And I consider this a favorite of the past year. It's just not something, I don't know how much longer something like this will be necessary with the way my makeup style is going. The next two primers I'm gonna kind of talk about together because I use them interchangeably. That's the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer and the NYX Plump Right Back Primer with electrolytes. These are both more of a jelly consistency. They add a little bit 
the hydration and they add a tacky layer to the skin, which helps to grip onto makeup. These are primers that either work for people or they don't work for people. I've heard people dislike the milk. I've heard people dislike the NYX Plump Right Back. I enjoy both of them and I use them interchangeably. If I have used this one one day just to get some extra use out of the product, I'll use this the next day. I did repurchase both of these over the past year. I feel like I lean more towards the milk. Other seasons in the past year where I really prefer the NYX. As far as which primer I'm going to use today, I'm going to use the NYX Plump Right Back because I feel like this one I haven't talked about too much recently on my channel. And I use one pump and I like to almost warm it up between my fingers. And for me, the big thing to do with this is kind of bounce it on the skin and spread. I find if you apply too much, it can get a little heavy and then it almost starts to pull everything off. I find with this and the Milk Makeup Hydra Grip, you need to apply a thin amount. I just find like if it doesn't fully dry down and set, it doesn't work as well. I find you just really need to take your time, spread it out, feather it. You'll notice I work into my eyebrows, on my eyelids. I'll work right over the Bobbi Brown under eye base and then pret it in. I very much apply this like I would a serum, a little bit all over, spread it, pat it in, let it do its job. The next step in my makeup routine is I like to use illuminating product under my foundation to add a little bit of glow to the high points. And I've had four products that I really love and on most days I use at least two of them because I use one that's a little bit more subtle and I use one that's a little bit more impactful. So the two I kind of use is like an all over base for the high points is either the Auric Glow Lust in Morganite or the L'Oreal True Match Lumi Glotion in shade 901 Fair Glow. I love them both. I feel like I've used the L'Oreal Lumi Glotion more on my channel this past year because this is the second one of these I've purchased. I'm already halfway through this and then I purchased one of these back in like April of this year and it looks pretty full. So I feel like I use the L'Oreal and also the L'Oreal is easier to travel with. So I feel like that gets a little bit more use for me, but I I love the way the Auric Glow Lust works. And I use about half a pump and my favorite brush to apply this with. You can use your sponge, you can use a sponge, you can use your foundation brush. I like using a fluffy flat paddle brush. This is the It Brushes for Ulta and I don't remember the number but it's called the OMG Foundation Brush. And with this, I just work on the high point of my cheek. So sometimes what I'll do if I just, if it's one of those days where I just want my cheeks to look really round, really full, I'll smile and apply to the top half of my cheekbone. And something funny, or not funny, I don't know if it's funny, it's funny to me. Oh, what, two, three months ago when I decided to get rid of my facial hair, just something about my face felt very off and I became very curious. I'm like, should I get cheek filler? That way my face has something here in the center portion to give a little bit of visual interest in. I talked to my nurse injector who does my Botox and my lip filler and it was gonna be quite a bit and it was gonna be really expensive. So I'm like, let me think about it. And I just don't wanna spend that much money. So then I started playing around and that's when I started doing this whole like smile and applying this illuminating base to the top half of my cheekbone. And just to having it on this upper half of the cheek, it adds a little bit more visual interest to the high point of the cheek. So that way it's almost creating this illusion of the light hitting the bounce and it's reflecting off, creates this roundness and then it fades into the natural hollow of the under cheek. And if you want to, you can contour. I don't normally contour because I feel like it just looks a little too harsh for day to day. If I'm going out at night or to a party, then I will contour. Or just something like that. It gives a little bit of extra visual interest to the cheek. And then since I started doing that, I'm like, oh, we don't need the cheek filler right now. Now is something when I like to add something a little bit more intense to add a little bit more of a targeted highlight. Now, this is all going to cover up with foundation. So layering is just gives me something I like and it also allows me to use up more of my collection. The two I have loved are the Chanel LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops and the Lisa Eldridge Seamless Skin Elevated Glow in the shade Pink Moon. I repurchased this back in like June. I love it so much, but I do use this quite a bit. So I'm going to use the Lisa Eldridge and I purchased this one last year and I have to say the expectation versus reality of the shade of Pink Moon wasn't quite what I was thinking about. It is more of a pink apricot color versus something like the Chanel LeBlanc Rosy Light Drops, which is more of an icy pink. That's what I thought Pink Moon was going to be. And I didn't start reaching for it until about February of this year. And I have to say, I've really come to love it. So this I target high up on the cheekbone, almost like the small C shape here, just on the outer edge of the orbital bone. I put it right there. And that little dot of product, I just kind of work it between the two sides of my cheek. And it's really nice. And also the Lisa L 
cartridge elevated glue. It does have a film former in it, which helps to create the illusion of slightly tighter skin. So right out here, it, that's one of the areas I get Botox in. I do a little bit of Botox right out here. It's only like five units on each side, just to help with the appearance of crow's feet from like me smiling all the time, because I want to keep smiling and my eyes are going to crinkle it either way on the outer corner. So I just get a little bit of Botox there just to soften the appearance. And that also helps to prevent them from getting etched in, but it doesn't stop me from being able to smile and emote and kind of like smile with the eyes. Because there's some people when they get Botox here in the outer corner, like they smile, and it's just like, it doesn't connect. I want to be able to connect all the way up, so. That's just a little tiny bit right through there. Speaking of Botox, I should have talked about this in my skincare video. Normally I get Botox about two to three times a year. This year I only went once and it was a full year after my previous appointment. So I got Botox done in August of 2022 and then almost a year to the day, I got it done in August again of this year and I only got Botox. I have not gotten any type of filler this year. And the only place I get filler is my lips and then whatever doesn't fit in my lips, it's normally like a fourth of a syringe they put right in my smile lines. I don't know enough it's just so the fourth doesn't go to a waste. Moving on to foundation. I have really loved mixing foundations. I've had a few foundations that kind of use more situationally. The first foundation that I feel like I've talked about the most on my channel this year is the number one De Chanel Red Camellia Revitalizing Foundation. I wear shade BR12. I did have to repurchase this this year. I love this because it gives the skin this healthy, hydrated, realistic look to the skin. And it's just easy. You can shear it out to like a light medium coverage or you can build it up to medium leaning to full coverage. I don't feel like you can get a full, full coverage out of this. But for me, I don't really like to exceed medium coverage because then I can use my concealer to add a little bit more wherever I want it. This is just a really great one. It is a little bit pricey. It's right at the $100 price point here in Canada. So if you want to splurge, this is one I really enjoy. For a Chanel foundation, it does have a decent shade range. Could be better, yes, but it's okay. And again, I wear shade BR12, which is going to be the light, cool toned shade they have. Another foundation I use pretty interchangeably, and this is one of my favorites during like spring and Autumn. The Givenchy Prism Lieb Foundation. And I wear shade 1-C105. This is pretty much like a skin tint with a little bit more coverage. So this is going to give you more of a solid light coverage, whereas a skin tint, I think about sheer too light coverage. I love this. It gives your skin a glow without looking too oily or too greasy. I really, really enjoy this. Going forward, I do not feel like I need both of these because they are very similar. If you want a little bit more coverage, I would say go for the Chanel. If you want something a little bit more sheer, go for the Givenchy. I think in the future, kind of similar to like the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip versus the NYX Plump Right Back. Do I need both? No. I feel like if I had to choose one, I would go for the Chanel, but the Givenchy is great too. Sometimes I just like the option of having a little bit more coverage. So I feel like I lean slightly more towards the Chanel, but they're both in my book a favorite for the year. My favorite foundation for warm summer months. Anytime it was really humid outside, I had to go somewhere, I needed something to last, or if I just wanted to look ultra flawless and not worry about things moving. I use the Estee Lauder Double Wear Sheer Long Wear Makeup, and this has a broad spectrum SPF 19, which I don't rely on my makeup for sunscreen. That's why I like to use a separate sunscreen. The shade I use is 1C1 Cool Bone. This shade, it's okay for me. It's not the best shade. Shade. It is a little too dark and the cool undertone is a little too saturated where it can look slightly orange on my skin. So that is where I fell in love with the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Foundation. I have the shade 015 Fair Warm. And if you're confused by warm, House Labs has a very similar color scale to MAC where it's slightly reversed. So your warm is going to be a pink undertone, cool is going to be golden and then you have neutral in the middle. I normally wear a cool tone foundation. So in House Labs or MAC, I do a warm or NW neutral warm. This is the closest match I have to my skin and it matches my body skin very, very well. But my body skin is slightly lighter than my facial skin. I do have rosacea, so my face always looks a little bit darker than my body. If I apply this all over my face, I can look 
look slightly muted out. So I like to use this to lighten up other shades. I find it mixes really, really well. I would like to try this in the next deepest cool shade or in the case of House Labs warm shade, but these are like $60. So two foundations are $120. True, you are getting quite a bit of product. This is 30 mil of product. So you would be getting 60 mil of product for $120-ish, which it's not bad, but if I'm gonna be spending that much money, I'd rather save the $20 and get my number one to Chanel foundation because I don't go through foundation very quickly. A normal bottle foundation lasts me about 12 months if it's the only foundation I use because I don't use a ton. My grab and go foundation I found back in like March of this year is the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Foundation. Now for my Canadian audience, this might look different than the L'Oreal True Match we have here in Canada. Here in Canada, the glass bottle is slightly taller and it has a built-on silver cap. This is the 2023 US formula. I like it better than the Canadian formula. It's a little bit thinner. It's got more of that watery texture and the shades are just, I like them better. Shade 1C in the Canadian formula is a little too orangey for me and shade 1C in the US formula is almost a spot on match. So I don't think I've used this a lot on my channel this year. So I want to highlight this today because it is one of my favorite foundations and it's the most affordable of the foundations I have in front of me. I've been back and forth between Virginia and Canada. So I really like the It Cosmetics Heavenly Lux number no. seven brush because it's dual sided so I only have to pack one brush. But when I'm here at home regularly, I really love my BK Beauty number no. 101 contoured foundation brush or the 106 round top foundation brush, which is almost identical to the foundation side of the It Cosmetics brush. So using the L'Oreal, I like to start in the center of my face, blend, from the inner portion out. And it's just such a lovely foundation. It spreads thinly over the skin while giving a solid light medium coverage. You can build this up to more of like a medium full. I prefer a little bit of a sheer wash all over and then if I need to, I can build where I need to. One half with, one half without. I'm gonna use what's left on the back of my hand and I'm just gonna skim over my forehead. My forehead tends to be pretty even, so if I just apply it a little bit, it will give me enough to even out and then I can always add a little bit more coverage with my concealer. I was gonna do a foundation collection and then I realized most of the foundations I had in my collection were just expired and I hadn't used them that often and it, it upset me because, you know, whether you are buying all drugstore makeup or you're shopping at Sephora or department store. If you have product that you're not using, it's just a waste of money. These are makeup products. Even the ones that have preservatives that are not in that clean beauty realm, they do expire at some point. And I don't want to put expired product on my face. I don't want to add anything to my skin that could cause it to react any more than it already does. I threw away most of my foundations and I have two in my drawer I need to test and all the other foundations I have are the ones that I'm talking about today. Going forward, I want to limit myself to only having maybe two or three liquid foundations because I really have ones I reach for every day and then ones kind of like the Estee Lauder double wear that I reach for when I want something that's going to be more like bulletproof and last all day. And the next step in my makeup routine is going to be concealer and I've just really loved concealers this year. First concealer I'm going to talk about is my favorite corrector of the year. Bobbi Brown Skin Corrector Stick in shade Light Bisque. To blend, I will either use the BK Beauty A506 brush that came off the Angie Hot and Flashy, or I'll use the smaller side of the It Cosmetics number no. 7. Lightweight everyday concealers, and they are the Ulta Beauty Youthful Glow Concealer in the shade Fair Cool. And the more high end version is the Givenchy Prism Lieb Skincare Glowing Concealer in shade C105. So, when I wear a light foundation like this all over for every day, I normally will go back and use concealer sparingly to add a little bit more coverage. And that for me always seems to be right here on the side of my forehead. I'm not exactly sure why, but I always feel like this portion of my forehead always needs or always can benefit from just a little bit more concealer. On the right side, I'm going to apply the Givenchy Prism Lieb. So compared side to side, they are both very similar. The Givenchy looks slightly lighter and brighter than the Ulta, but when you blend them out, they're pretty similar. So using the large side of my It Cosmetics brush, I'm going to blend out the Ulta Beauty, and then I'm going to go over and blend out the Givenchy. The biggest difference, other than the price point, the Ulta Beauty is going 
going to be around, I think the Ulta Beauty is like 10 US dollars. And here in Canada, I believe the Givenchy is around 40. But even with the conversion from US to Canadian, which I think currently is like 1.4, the Ulta Beauty is far more budget friendly than the Givenchy, but I find the Givenchy just spreads out a little bit easier and it has more mileage on it. Especially if you take a damp sponge and dab over, it just blends in. And the Ulta Beauty does blend so easily. Like up close, I don't feel like you can really see either in the skin, but when you use a magnifying mirror, the Givenchy just kind of really melts in and melts with the texture of the skin, where the Ulta Beauty Similar, but it's slightly more of head parent, especially on the edge of some of the pores. It's not everywhere. You really have to inspect it to see it. But between the two, I feel like the Givenchy just kind of blends and melts into the skin a little bit more. But if you're on a budget and you are near an Ulta, the Ulta Beauty Youthful Glow Concealer is lovely. If you want to spend more or if you want a concealer that can double as like a skin tint, check out the Givenchy. It's really lovely and you get a ton of product in here. 11 mil of product in the Ulta Beauty, you get. 4.5 more than double the amount of product in the Givenchy. And the next two concealers are concealers that I use when I want coverage. And they are the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in the shade Vanilla and the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Luminous Matte Concealer in the shade I wear is 1.5 Yogurt Drops. Starting with the NARS, I do have the mini size. Years ago, I had like the full size. I just felt like I never used that much concealer and this small size of the NARS has served me exceptionally well over the year. Where I applied my color corrector on the inner corner, I don't necessarily apply this concealer just because I don't feel like I need to, to layer that much more coverage, but I'll apply a little bit on each side then I'll go back to the small out of my brush and I will blend out and here on the inner corner I just start by stippling and that way it will carry some of that concealer on top of the area where I use the color corrector and then I can blend out and I find for me I like to work it up slightly towards the lash line not all the way to the lash line just below the lash line and then blend out on days where I want to really brighten up the appearance of my skin or I want more of a full coverage glam look especially for a party that's when I love to use the Huda Beauty Faux Filter Concealer. This is another one of those concealers I almost want to try out in a slightly deeper shade. When I did all the online questionnaires as far as what shade you should get, it suggested this one. It works for me. It just feels slightly too bright for what I like. But what I like to do is I like to add a little bit here on the outer corner of my eye and just slightly onto the outer half of my upper lid. It helps to brighten up the outer corner of my eye and it gives me enough product to carry onto the lid that acts like an eye primer and it is so smooth. You like it gives coverage, but it blends out and it almost looks like a filtered effect on the eyes. It's so beautiful. I like to slightly take off any excess product that's just sitting on top of the skin. I mentioned towards another concealer I used this year, but ultimately that concealer I started to fall out of favor with. And that's what led me to try the Huda Beauty Concealer. And that's the Kosas Revealer Concealer. I love that concealer, but I did have some minor issues with it. One, the shade that I used, which was shade 1.5C, is supposed to be a pink undertone. But for me, it's still pulled quite yellow and I don't use a ton of concealer. I just use a few dots here and there and Kosas is a clean beauty brand. Their products don't have some of the preservatives that some of the other brands do so they can stay under that clean branding. It goes off very quickly. That concealer lasts me about six months then it smells off and I just don't feel comfortable putting it on my eyes but then I look at the tube and there's still like more than half the product left so there is like $40 down the drain because I can't use it anymore. That's why I don't have the Kosas in here. It's still a great one. If you use more concealer than I do and you go through it in a timely manner, I'd say try it. But for me, how quickly it goes off versus how much product I get to use that amount of time, it's not worth the premium in my opinion. Big love of my life is powder foundation. And this year I've had two I reach for pretty consistently. And they are the Bare Minerals Original Foundation in the shade Fair 01 and the Laura Geller Baked Balance and Brighten Powder Foundation. And I use the shade Porcelain. There are days when I use this as a standalone foundation, especially like days where I'm wearing tinted sunscreen and I just want a little bit of coverage, I'll use these. Or if it's days like today where I want more coverage, but I don't want to add more foundation, then I'll use my powder foundation. Throughout the year, my favorite powder foundation brush is still the MAC 150S Large Powder Foundation Brush. This is technically a brush designed for setting powder, but I find you can just build up powder so quickly. You can apply it and it never feels heavy 
or it puts on too much product. But if you want to build it like I've demonstrated before when I did my review of the MAC Studio Fix Powder Foundation, you can use this brush to build up thin layers of product and you can get more of a medium full coverage look, but it just takes a little bit more building. But from the more fluffy, wispy bristles, it just gives you a more diffused, lightweight look on the skin. I did not think this all the way through before I applied the powder foundation. The next step in my makeup routine is applying a little bit of a highlight. I like to layer my highlight because I like to glow in the areas I want to glow. And I always start that routine off with a liquid highlight. And my favorite liquid highlight to use this year has been the Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer in the shade Enchant. Since I've already applied a little bit of powder, what I'm gonna do is I like to work off the back of my hand and I like to use that brush I use to apply my base liquid illuminator. And since I've already got that base illuminator on that's gonna come slightly through, I just apply a tiny little bit in the highest points of my cheek where I want to add glow. And since I do have powder on already, I'm just going to use that brush to stipple over, almost like I'm using my brush like a beauty sponge. I'm just going to press it over. You could use a beauty sponge. I just personally like to reach for a brush, then use my sponge to soften things out. And then I will go back to my foundation brush and just blend over the edges. That way everything is nice and smooth. So again, favorite liquid highlight of the year was the Rare Beauty Liquid Luminizer in the shade Enchant. It's a little excessive. Now I like to use a cream highlight. And I've had two I've really fallen in love with this year. The first one is an old favorite. This is from Clinique. This is the Chubby Stick Highlight in the shade Hefty Highlight. To use my brush, you could also work out the back of your hand. I just like working with my brush. And then this time, since I've already applied here, the cream, in my opinion, is just a little bit more subtle. So I smile and on the ball of the cheek is where I'll apply this. And again, it's just going to make the cheek look a little bit more rounded. And then I'll use my foundation brush just to pat over. And the other cream highlight that came to my makeup collection this year is a luxury option. This is from the brand Westman Atelier, and this is called the Super Loaded Tinted Highlight, and the shade I have is Peau de Rosé, and this is a really beautiful poured cream, and I purchased this on the recommendation of a YouTuber. I found earlier this year in her channel. I just, it was so lovely and so relaxing. Her name is Simply Blair. And she was raving about this West Mantilla highlighter in the shade Peau de Peche. Peachy shades aren't really my favorite. So when I saw this more rosy shade, I decided to try it out and it's lovely. Normally I'll apply this with my finger, but today I wanted to use it with my brush. And again, I'm gonna use my brush just to pat over. The next step in my routine is I like to set down that liquid and cream highlighter with a powder highlighter. Highlighter. And yes, if you're wondering, you use three highlighters? Yes, I do because I love highlighter. And my favorite one throughout the year has been from Chanel, Crude Lumiere Highlighting Powder in shade number 40, White Opal. This year, I've really loved two different highlighting brushes. The first one and the one I'm using today is the e.l.f. Small Taper Brush. I also really love the e.l.f. Highlighting Brush, which I find very similar to the Small Taper Brush, but this is just the one I grabbed. And the other one I love, which is slightly newer to my collection, Rare Beauty positive light highlighting brush and this came out with the rare beauty powder highlights small tapered brush or the highlighting brush I love this for a generalized soft wash on the cheeks since I have already applied liquid and cream I'm going to stipple and this is going to help use this highlighting powder to set down the liquids Rare Beauty Highlighting Brush. This is going to be, a, it's more flimsy, but the way it picks up product, it's great for adding a concentrated, almost like high beam of highlight. So I like to focus it right on the highest point and then blend out. And it just gives that really beautiful opalescent glow to the skin. The Chanel highlighter is not the most intense highlighter I've used, but I love the subtlety of this highlight and it's just such an elegant formula that I feel like it gives the effect that you're going for when you apply a highlighter. It gives that kind of beam or glow to the skin, but it doesn't look too intense. It doesn't emphasize texture. It is more of a premium option, but I feel like it's something that's worth the premium. I mentioned earlier, I've not been a big contour person this year, but when I do, I like to use a powder foundation that's slightly deeper. So the two I love are the one 
Size Beauty Turn the Base Versatile Powder Foundation in the shade Light 1R. And I love the MAC Studio Fix Powder Plus Foundation in the shade N4. I have an entire video all about Studio Fix Powder, so I am going to focus today on the one from One Size Beauty. I cleaned off my small tapered brush from e.l.f because this is another brush I love for contouring. So since this is similar to my skin tone, I'm going to apply back and then work my way forward. And what I love about this, since this is a skin tone powder and it's about one shade deeper than my skin, I can kind of go to town with contouring. I can add shape. It is going to be deeper than my skin tone, so it gives the effect that I'm going for. But since it's not a true contour powder or a bronzer, I don't have to worry about adding any type of gray or orangey stripes to the skin. So I can apply it a little bit more liberally. And if you're someone who likes to do a little jawline contour, you can do that as well. And then sometimes what I'll do, I'll go back to that brush I used, the MAC 150S that I applied the powder foundation with. Since this is big and fluffy, it will help to diffuse out the product. I'll just take a tiny bit more product on my brush and this will help to reinforce that powder contour, but it will also help to soften it down. Another thing I love since this is a powder foundation, you are gonna get a little bit more coverage as well, which is sometimes an added bonus. When it comes to bronzing, I've really only loved one bronzer throughout the year, and that goes to the Laura Geller Baked Bronze and Brighten in the shade Fair. And what I love about this is you have this really beautiful red chocolate shade. You have more of a beigey pearl and a pale baby pink shade swirled throughout. And my favorite bronzer brush has been the Refer number 22. This is a flagship bronzer brush. And what I love is it's a big fluffy brush. Bronzer, since I don't use a ton of it, I like a large brush that's going to pick up a very diffused amount. And I can just use it on the back of my cheeks up into the forehead to add some warmth to those high points. And what I like is it's natural hair. The natural hair means the bristles, they're gonna have a little bit more kind of a grip or a little bit more kind of scratchy than a synthetic brush. So it's going to pick up the powder a little bit more and it's going to help diffuse it. That is the favorite bronzer of the year is the Laura Geller Baked Bronze and Brighten. And for my skin tone, I love the shade Fair. The category which I really don't have restraint and I don't have an apology for it because I don't apologize. I love blush so much. I have my all over cheek blush and then I have my blush topper which almost blends together the highlight and the cheek color. This year there's also been some heartbreak on, along with the blushes. Some of my favorite blushes I think are getting discontinued. So the first one I'm going to talk about is one that the, the, the new one just really broke my heart. <laughs> <laughs> little dramatic, but this is the Dior Backstage Rosy Glow. This is the previous formula, the, fir the formula that was first introduced when Dior brought out their Backstage Collection, and this was only available in the Pink Glow and the Coral Glow. And then earlier this year, they discontinued the Pink Glow and the Coral Glow and then re-released them in an expanded selection of blushes. And the new Pink Glow just isn't the same. It's a lot more of a lavender pink with a strong white base. It's even on my skin it looked a little chalky. I'm still hanging on to the original. I'm still using it and thankfully you don't need a lot of, to get payoff with this one. I love it. I just wish the new variation was better because I don't like it. The next blushes that really upset me <laughs> were the Bobbi Brown powder blushes. Here I have the shade Pale Pink and the shade Sand Pink. I love these but also on the Sephora website, the Bobbi Brown website, the Shoppers Drug Mart website, the Bobbi Brown powder blushes are just gone or they're all sold out except for maybe one shade which normally means they're either getting reformulated or discontinued. The powder blush has been such a staple for the Bobbi Brown range. I feel like they're gonna probably pull the ones they have, reformulate them, and then come out with something new because how could Bobbi Brown's range be around with other blushes or blushes are such a staple formula and I love these but sadly I think they were discontinued here towards the end of the year because it was just in like 
October, November when I realized that you couldn't find many of the shades. I realized they were getting discontinued or being phased out or whatever is happening to them right after I bought a new shade. And I purchased the shade Peony and I was like, oh, that's really cute. Let me buy that one. And then I'm like, oh wait, why is this the only shade available? Or why was this the only shade available on Shoppers Drug Mart when I purchased this? I got this during a point redemption event. And I was like, oh, it's a beautiful shade. And then I don't know what's going on. I still love them. I still use them in my like off camera life, but that makes me sad. I hope whatever Bobbi Brown comes out to replace the powder blushes that were pre-existing is just as good, if not better than this formula. Now I'm kind of stumped. I don't know which blush to use on camera because they were all so good. I think I want to layer a few shades together. So the first formula I really loved this year, which has been a pre-existing love of mine. This is the Clinique Cheek Pop Blush Formula. I have three shades. So let's take a look at each of them. The first shade we're going to look at is the newest to my collection. This is the shade number 12 Pink Pop. This is a beautiful neutral leaning cool mid-tone pink. It is beautiful. It is lively. It is fresh. The next one we're going to look at is shade number 14, Heather Pop. This is going to be a mid-tone muted pink. If you are a soft muted summer or even a deep dark winter and you're looking for more of a subtle blush, Heather Pop is stunning. It is such a beautiful shade. And one of my favorite, one of the more unique blushers to my collection is shade number 15, Pansy Pop. I want to use this shade today to start off my cheek look and I'm going to use my favorite blush brush of the year, which is another old favorite. It Cosmetics Heavenly Luxe number four French Boutique Blush Brush. With the Clinique Cheek Pop Blush, they are a baked jelly texture, so you need to really work your brush in. And what I like to do is I like to start back on the cheek and then stipple and buff. And then sometimes what I'll do if I want a little extra pigment, I'll then use my bronzer brush. So the Refer number 22, this is again, a natural bristle brush. It's gonna be a little bit more scratchy than the synthetic It Cosmetics brush. So I can pick up more color on my brush and I can use this to skim over and where this color has a little bit more of that rosy hue that comes through when you apply it to the skin. It almost gives the skin this slightly wind burnt effect. Using it with like a large brush like the Ruffer that's mixed with the bronzer, it adds just a really beautiful glow to the back half of the cheek. And that's something I used to like to start the base of my cheek color look. Now the next two blushes are something that is almost like a hybrid between a traditional cheek color and a blush topper. And they both have a little bit of glow. The first one we looked at is one I featured in my channel earlier in the year. This is a throwback form that is stunning. This is the Clinique Blushing Blush in the shade number 114 Iced Lotus. It is the most stunning cool tone blush I think I've ever used. And it's a shade I had many, many years ago. I'm going to link a video I used with this blush in the cards. It is one of my favorites. If you are a cool toned blush lover like I am, this is one to check out. And you can often find it on some pretty good sales because this formula has been around since the 80s or 90s if I'm not mistaken. And the other blush I really loved, and it's one I loved enough to buy all the shades. Should I have bought all the shades? Probably not, but I'm happy to have them all and they're such a great price point. This is the Essence Pure Nude Bait Blush. My favorite shade is number 02 Pink Flush. These are really a fascinating formula. You get a lot of pigment for a little bit of product. I'm gonna take this here more towards the front of my cheek. And I like to focus here high on the cheek on the front and then work back into the Clinique blush. Essence blushes are so fascinating because they are quite affordable. I believe here in Canada, they are around six to $8 full price and they come in eight shades. And the formula feels quite high end. It almost reminds me of the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Blushes. And if I had to compare the shade Pink Flush to a shade, it's very reminiscent to Sublime Flush, which is the pink with the coral and the lavender vein running through it. It's so similar. This is gonna be the most similar to those, except it's slightly more cool toned where the Hourglass Sublime Flush is more neutral warm. And I love that you can just continue to build this. And what that light reflection has, it just allows this blush to sheer out so easily. Next category of blush is the blush toppers. And this is a section I love because it helps to almost act as a transitional color between your highlight and your blush color. The colors I have here, it all started off with a limited edition product from Chanel, LeBlanc collection that came out in the spring. And this is called Fantasy de Chanel, which is an illuminating blush powder. It looks like this, it is the 
Chanel Tweed with the double C and it's more of like a golden pink shade. I want to swatch this for you because I did not realize the other blush topper shades I purchased this year almost all act like dupes. <laughs> Here is the Fantasy de Chanel. This was a limited edition from spring, but today when I was looking at the Chanel website, this is still available. I believe this was around 90 Canadian dollars and that would have been like what, 60 or 70 US dollars. Definitely more of a luxury price point, but it's beautiful and it's more on that neutral, neutral lean warm, depending on your underlying skin tone. So that's the Fantasy de Chanel. The next one I purchased, I was like, oh well, that's similar. <laughs> and that was one of my old favorites here, my Extra Dimension Blush. And this is the shade Into the Pink. Into the Pink versus Fantasy de Chanel. It gives a very similar glow. It has a little bit more of a light reflective particle and it's slightly more cool toned than the Chanel. And it's permanent and it's a better price point than Chanel. The next one was because one of my subscribers said it was a formula I had to have and I've never had anyone express I needed a product with that much urgency before. So of course I bought it. And this is the RMS Redimensioned Powder Blush and the shade I purchased is in French Rosé. She was right, this is a stunning blush formula. And here it is in the back of my hand. It definitely has the most pigment. So Fantasy de Chanel. MAC Into the Pink, and then RMS French Rosé Redimension Blush. It is stunning. And this is gonna be a little bit more neutral where MAC is more cool toned and then the Chanel is slightly warmer. And the most recent one that came into my collection during the Sephora Fall VIB Savings event is from House Labs. And this is called the Bio Radiant Gel Powder Highlighter in the shade Rose Quartz. And here is Rose Quartz out the end, so Fantasy de Chanel, MAC Into the Pink, RMS French Rosé, and House Labs Rose Quartz. For today's look, I'm gonna use the MAC Extra Dimension Powder Blush in the shade Into the Pink. And my favorite brush I purchased on recommendation of Jessica Braun, Real Techniques 449 Tapered Cheek Brush. She was raving about this blush for cream blushes. And I love it for cream and liquid blushes, but it's also great for this cheek topper for MAC. So I like it here on the top of the cheekbone. And I will bring this down to the ball of the cheek and then work it back. Blush toppers are beautiful. If you do have texture to the skin, they can emphasize. I mean, most anything that reflects light will emphasize texture to some degree. I like these, they make me happy. And now in the cool winter months, it kind of adds that like burr, I'm cold flush to the cheeks, which I love. Next, we have eyeshadow. And this year, all of my favorite shadows have been in form of eyeshadow palettes. So let's see. The first one we're gonna talk about is one I've raved about for years. I did a short on this, and this is from the Korean beauty brand Roman. And this is one of the better than palette eyeshadows. And this is shade 06 Peony New Garden. This is a beautiful assortment of cool to neutral cool shades. And then in this palette, you have eight matte shades varying from deep to light and then you have two shimmer shades. This is really beautiful. It's really subtle. This is ideal if you are around my skin tone, I would say. If you're fair to light medium, this would be good. Much deeper than light medium. I feel like most of these shades won't show up too much or they could pull a little ashy and chalky. But if you're fair skin, you want a great assortment of neutral to neutral cool sculpting shaping shadows for the eyes, this is beautiful. Another K-beauty love of mine comes from the brand Clio. And this is the Clio Pro Palette in the shade number 14, Atelier and Hanam. Neutral, cool sculpting shades, some pops of glitter, some deeper shades to add definition to the eye. And it's very, very easy to use. This is a little bit more expensive for K-beauty. I believe here in Canada, these retail for around $40. So a little bit more pricey, but I feel like they are worth it and they are beautiful. The Roman Better Than Palettes are around $18 to $20. A palette that I purchased back in the spring from a recommendation from a subscriber, and honestly, it's been one of my favorite palettes I purchased this year, is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz Palette. This is for me not an everyday palette, but going out, it is one of my favorites. You have a beautiful assortment of cool to neutral cool tone shadows. You do have a few little pops of warmth. Honestly, my favorite shade is this like jelly shadow. I love using this base. This is called Love Stone. And the way I use this is often, I'll even reach for this if I'm not using this palette. I'll pick it up on my finger and I'll tap it right over my eyelid. It does have a little bit of a tackiness. So 
any type of creasing that might be happening on my eyelid, I can use this to smooth over and it just helps to grip on whatever I put on next. Here in Canada, the larger Huda Beauty palettes retail for around $90. In the spring, Huda Beauty did a sale and I purchased this for I think 30% off, so I saved quite a bit of money. Palette I've loved so much this year is my like little everyday palette of Sydney Grace shadows. I have most of these shades are ones I featured in my recent collab video with Andy of Andy Does Stuff. She has been another favorite this year. Her channel just brings me so much joy and I've had such a pleasure of getting to be become friends with her off camera and she's just such a lovely wonderful human being and I sent her something for Christmas I just got the notification it was delivered today and I just feel so giddy I hope she loves it as much as I think she's going to love it but for the most part these are all the shades I featured in that video with the exception of three shades because in that video we featured nine shadows and this palette I have 12. I'm going to do another video with this coming up soon because I love these shadows so much and to be honest Sydney Grace has kind of like blown my mind as far as the quality of the eyeshadows. These are around $5.25 per shadow in the United States, so that makes it closer to $7.50 a shadow here in Canada. It does vary a little bit if you're buying a matte shadow or a pressed pigment. The pressed pigments are slightly more expensive. I purchased these either during the Christmas and July sale or during the Black Friday sale. I needed 15 shadows to complete my large shimmer palette from Sydney Grace, and I purchased those during the Black Black Friday. So I cannot wait to focus more with Sydney Gray shadows in the future. And going forward, my aim is to purchase fewer eyeshadows and focus on kind of duping the vibes, as Hannah Louie Poston would say, and use the singles I have in my Sydney Grace collection to kind of mimic the overall appearance or the color story that attracts me in some higher end shadows and just palettes in general that I'll only use once or twice for a few shadows. So maximize what I have and minimize my spending elsewhere. And that brings us to the eyeshadow palette that I will be using today. And this is one of my favorites. And I am so excited that I finally found a ColourPop eyeshadow palette. That makes me happy. This is one that one of my friends pointed out to me when we were in Ulta. This is the ColourPop Petals and Point. And this is one of ColourPop's classic nine pan eyeshadow palettes. And it's very much ballet themed. I love this because you do have the pinks, some neutral browns, and the slightly sagey gray green shades. This reminded me of the Natasha Denona Retro Glam Palette. And I did purchase the Retro Glam Palette. I did a big overview of my more cool toned summery eyeshadow palettes. And I said in that video, that palette was something I bought for half off. And it was just, it didn't live up to my expectations. This, on the other hand, it gave me everything I wanted for the Natasha Denona Retro Glam. I believe I paid around 12 or 14 US dollars. So even converted to Canadian, that is still under $20. And the ColourPop formula is beautiful. So I'm glad I now have a color story that I love. For my everyday look, we are gonna start off with this matte pink. And this shade is called lace me up. And my favorite brush to start my eyeshadow looks with is the BK Beauty A105. And this is from the collaboration with Angie from Hot and Flashy. And any of the brushes that start with an A are from that collection. I'm going to just go right over that shade from the Huda Beauty palette. And I'm going to put this all over my eyelid to act as my base. I like to do two thin layers all over my eye starting closer to my lash line and working my way up. Next, I like to start building some depth in my eyes. And for that, I'm going to use a large fluffy brush. I'm going to use my BK Beauty A503, and I'm gonna use the medium deep mauve called Grand Finale. And I'm gonna take it right on the point and whisk it into the socket of my eye. And I almost whisk from the outer corner to meet the front of my eyebrow. That way I keep this inner corner of my eye looking big and bright. And here on the outer corner, I just roughly do a little swirl motion and then connect back up and in. And I find this simple motion gives me the lifted defined look I like for my day-to-day -day eyeshadow look because I don't do very dramatic looks. And to be honest, most of the looks I do in my everyday life, whether it's for the day or going out at night for like a party or something, is this. It's funny because in retrospect, I used to try to do a whole lot more with my eyes and I just never liked it. And then switching to using fewer shadows, changing my placement and taking some time to watch videos about 
new placements has been such a game changer. It's really made me enjoy eyeshadow. A502, and if we compare this to the A503, it's just a little bit smaller. And now I'm gonna use the shade with a little bit of shimmer. This is called Encore. I'm going to tap it here in the outer corner of my eye. I like to really focus tapping here on the outside and work my way up and then use a light hand just to just gently buff and wiggle. It's not gonna have a ton of impact. To be honest, I'm gonna put a little bit of shimmer on my eye that will cover most of it, but it helps to shape and add a little bit of more contour to the eye look. BK Beauty A504. And I go to this kind of sage green called plie. I like to take the brush, point it up, go on my lower lash line, and I just work the shade all over. On its own, this green looks a little funny, but have patience. A503, which is that large blender, and I'm gonna go right over. This does have a little bit of the pink shade that we used earlier, so it's gonna help to soften down that sage green a little bit. A502, shimmery pink mauve called Satin Tips. And then I just take this and I go right over top of plie. I like to highlight the inner corner of my eye. This is where I like to use the lightest shade. It's almost like a off-white called Fluffed Tutu. And I'm gonna go back to the BK Beauty A501. And this, I like to go here on the inner corner of my eye, almost onto the side of my nose. Press and pull and blend. This is going to look pretty stark when you first apply it. You are just mostly trying to plop the color down and get it on the eye. 503, which is a large fluffy brush, blend over. Over, you do have some residual shadow and you're gonna soften over that. You're still gonna have that lightness. Again, have faith. This year for eyeliner, it's kind of been the same one all year. This is the Sephora Collection 12 Hour Colorful Contour Eye Pencil and I like the shade number 15, Flirting Game. And I use this to tight line my upper lash line. And then for my upper lash line, I have fallen in love with a liquid eyeliner. I've never been a liquid liner person, but I finally found one in a formula I like and a color that I like. And I apply it now because I go over top of it with a shimmer shadow, it makes it a little bit more softer. The Stila Stay All Day Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner in the shade Alloy. And this is a classic eyeliner formula. This was kind of like the big liquid eyeliner that everyone loved before the KVD Tattoo Liner came out. I just like to do a little bit of stamping on the outer corner of my eye and then I just connect those little stamp marks. For the most part, I don't worry about it being too perfect because I'm gonna go back with my A504 and I'm gonna use the deeper shimmery matte called Up to the Bar and just take a little bit on the point of my brush and I buff right over top of the liquid eyeliner just to soften it a little bit. Pink Ribbon, which is that mid-tone pink in the middle of the palette, stamp right over my eyelid. I'm gonna go to the inner corner, to the outer corner. Now I like to go back to the A503, blend over again. This look is more about just creating a tonal depth. In a way, you're almost creating like a pastel ballet pink smoky eye because you're getting this gradation of light to dark and that's all a smoky eye is. To finish off my eyes, we have mascara and this year has been the year of mascara. I started off the year loving the Ramon Han All Fix mascara in the shade Long Ash. Then I fell in love with the Mood, I think Volume Curl mascara in brown, which is more of like a really beautiful burgundy brown. Then it was the L'Oreal Voluminous Brown Balm Mascara. I'm gonna use this on my left eye. And this is just so beautiful. It's not the most dramatic mascara, but it definitely gives you a really beautiful lengthening and defining look. And for me, that is what I love. And then the mascara that I'm also using that I also love is it's been out for a few years and I'm just now trying it. This is from the brand Glossier. This is their Lash Slick Mascara in the shade Brown. One of the most beautiful tubing mascaras because normally my issue with tubing mascaras is I love the way they wear, but they're quite heavy and they tend to flatten out my lashes because like I own mass lash curlers. I love lash curlers, but it's honestly a step I often forget most days. Once they're on the eyes, there's honestly not a huge difference between the L'Oreal Brown Balm Mascara and the Glossier Lash Slick and Brown. Well, my eyebrows are microbladed, they faded out a little bit, so I like to add a little something, and for that, you can't get much better than the e.l.f. Wow Brow. I use the shade Taupe. And it's such an easy product because all you do is just brush it through. Here on the front of my brows, where they are a little bit more sparse and my microblading has faded the most, I will go through and apply a little bit more there. And there we go, that's pretty much eyebrows done. We have our final category, which is lips. I always love to start my lip lookout with a lip liner. And this year, we've got some old favorites, so 
I've got two brand new lip pencils. I've got a Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat and Pillow Talk and a MAC Lip Pencil and Dervish. I've been through two of these already this year. And it's just, I've mentioned both of these pencils, I think in a plethora of videos. I know they were my favorites for 2021 and 2022. They are just my favorite your lips but better lip pencil. This year, I did have a few that joined the party. I've been using this since the early spring. This is the Huda Beauty Lip Contour 2.0 in the shade Mute pink. It's really beautiful. It's like my lip tone, but slightly deeper. And then I've got two newer ones to my collection and I am just head over heels with them. So I'm going to layer them today. The first one I'm going to be using is the RMS Beauty Go Nude Lip Pencil. And this is in the shade Morning Dew. When I purchased the RMS blush, I was shopping on the detox market and I think I needed to spend $50 to get free shipping. So I added this, which was $20 and I only need like 10. I purchased this and at first I have to admit, I was slightly disappointed by the color because I think this is described as a rosy nude. And if anything, this for me is like a slightly rosy taupe. On me, it definitely pulls slightly warmer than I had originally anticipated. But I do like using just a little bit on the perimeter of my lip. And then I go in with a lip liner I have just fallen head over heels with. This is from the brand Lawless. And this year I tried Lawless for the first time. It started off with the Forget the Filler Gloss. Then it was a Forget the Filler Lipstick. And then during the most recent Sephora sale, I purchased the Forget the Filler Lip Liner and one of their blushes. And I have to say, the lip liner is a standout. I purchased the shade Pink Slip and I wear it down to a nub very quickly because I like to use it as an all over lip stain. Actually, I have to sharpen this. So for most days, this is kind of like the lip look. I'll take a tissue and blot it down a little bit. And then I like to go with one of my lip lipsticks. I'm gonna say lipsticks in quotations because I don't really like a lot of traditional lipsticks from Dior. This is the Dior Addict Lipstick in the shade Thai and Dior. And just kind of like a nudie pink nothing. It's kind of like my lips, but better kind of color. Really pretty. And I have to say, I think I reach for this so much because of the packaging. These you buy separate, so you can buy the refill, then you buy the package separately. Horribly expensive lipstick. I think altogether it's like $80 for a lipstick, but I wanted the case and I bought it. So I have it now. <laughs> The next one is one from Peri Para. This is the Ink Mood Glowy Stick, and I have the shade 01. And this is a little bit more pink. And back in early summer, this was my favorite thing because there was barely anything else on the face. This was like my go-to lip color because it adds a little bit of pink, but it's not too much. One that I've really loved this year. This is another more of a luxury pick. This is from Guerlain. This is the Kiss Kiss B Glow shade 258 Rose Glow. And this is very much like the Guerlain take on the Dior Lip Glow and Pink Glow. So here it is. It's one of those pH adjusting colors or pH adjusting colors that warms up and goes to a different shade of pink on everyone. And for me, it's like this mid-tone rosy pink. And the final two lipsticks I use are pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna do one on one side, one on the other. The first one we're gonna take a look at is the L'Oreal Color Riche. This is shade 135 Ballerina Shoes. So here's L'Oreal Ballerina Shoes. And then on the right side, we have the Maybelline Color Sensational in the shade 015 Born With It. Maybelline Born With It, L'Oreal Ballet Shoes. Very similar, the L'Oreal is slightly more frosty. Blend them in together, you don't really tell a difference. They are just like that easy kind of early 2000s lipstick meets lip gloss with a little bit of frost lipstick. I like it, maybe that's because I'm a child of the 90s, 2000s, and this is just kind of the look I like. Just, I don't know, colors like this with the cheek, the eye, it's all very like Y2K frosty pink, and that's kind of my, that's my vibe lately, and I love it. Almost all know that I love a good lip stain, so one of my my favorites has been the Peri Para in number six. And then I love the Roman Juicy Lasting Tint. This is in shade number 11, Lilac Cream. And the Roman Juicy Lasting Tint. And this is shade number 32, Bear Berry Smoothie. I've used them all in videos. I will link some stuff down below or I'll also have my lip swatching video that you all can check out. I think that's up already. If not, it's coming soon, so stay tuned. And then lastly, we have lip gloss. With lipsticks like this, I don't normally use lip gloss. I normally like gloss when I use a lip stain and then it dries down. And the two I've loved the most, one is the Chanel Rouge Coco Gloss. This is shade 804. And then the NARS Afterglow Lip Shine Gloss. And this is in shade 
Turkish Delight. Actually, you know what? I love Turkish Delight was such a good color. It was very classic of like 2000s because I think Kim Kardashian wore Turkish Delight in the previous gloss formula. If I'm not mistaken, it was Turkish Delight over MAC Angel Frost Lipstick, which actually, honestly, I feel like that would be a great combo today. Actually, now I want to buy Angel Lipstick. So here's another frosty pink lipstick. Wow, we are giving like Y2K Sugar Plum Fairy vibes. To finish off makeup, we have setting spray. I have my Old Faithful, which is MAC Fix Plus. This is the rose. I'm almost empty. I do have two backups of this. That's the original one. I like this because this is a glycerin-based spray. Glycerin is a humectant. It's going to help melt the makeup into the skin. And a newer one that I've been using for about a couple months now, this is the MAC Fix Plus Stay Over Alcohol-Free Setting Spray. Just something about this, the way it sets the skin, makes it look fresh, but it never feels tight or dry is wonderful. And it doesn't have a strong scent. Like honestly, it doesn't really have any scent. So that's what I love about this. And for me, this replaced the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Airbrush Setting Spray because it's more expensive and it has a strong scent. This does the same thing without the scent and it's a little bit less expensive. So here is my favorite setting spray. And here is the final look. My everyday makeup routine using some of my favorite products from 2023 and products that I'm excited to take with me into 2024. I cannot wait to, to read some of your favorite products in the comment section down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. It's going to be a long chatty one so put a pink heart in the comments if you made it this far. You are the real MVP of the year. <laughs> Thank you all so much for taking time out of your day to spend with me here. I cannot wait to see you in the next video where we're going to talk about some of my favorite fragrances of 2023. Until then, take care of yourself wherever it is you are in the world, and I will see you later. Bye, y'all.